have been in healthcare for about 35 years now as a nurse practitioner, as a midwife, and working in the hospital as a nurse. I have become very discouraged with medicine because I think that we're not getting to the root of the problem. And when we talk about lifestyle, most of our diseases are from our lifestyle. And that's why I'm here to talk. And no judgment, right? I don't judge what people eat or what they do, but it's like having the information enables you to better be care providers of your own body. Because our own body is incredibly important to us, but if we're relying on medicine to keep giving us pills, we're never getting to the root of the problem. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, and I'm going to go a little fast only because I, I know I only have about 20 minutes. And, whew, I get out of breath when I talk too fast. 90% of diseases now are attributed to lifestyle and eating habits. Uh, heart disease, the number one killer in the United States, is preventable. I have to tell you, I've been touched by heart disease from a husband, my previous husband died from a sudden heart attack, my father, my grandfather, and my stepfather. That's four deaths that were all very sudden, and once they're there, the next thing you know, they're not. So that might be a little bit of why I'm really pushing for this also. It's because I don't want other people to have to suffer. Um, same is true for diabetes, cancer, and then high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol. It's all due to our lifestyle. Yes, you may have a genetic predisposition to one of these diseases, but what pulls the trigger on whether or not you get that is your lifestyle. So you do have some control over your future and your health. Um, just kind of cute thing. So you can change you, it. You, you have time. Okay. I said we're 20 minutes late, just generally. <laughs> we're, we're 20 after. You've got more. Yeah. Okay, so then I can slow down and breathe yeah. in time. <laughs> The acronym for the standard American diet in healthcare is SAT. It's the standard American diet. Um, and if you look at what we're eating as a, a country, as a nation, 63% of the food that we eat is processed. We're talking processed meats, we're talking processed vegetables, we're talking TV dinners. And I don't know if you guys have ever spent the time to look at the back of anything yeah. that you buy. You can't even pronounce these foods. So it's a processed food. Your body has to figure out what to do with all those chemicals. Mm -hmm. And if you look again, processed plant foods, 6%. Whole plant foods, 6% of foods is all we're eating that are actually food that hasn't been adulterated, hasn't had fat added to it, oil fat added to it, MSG, salt, you name it in our food. Right? So it's a pretty sad state of affairs. And you'll hear me talk about animal products. And some people choose to eliminate them completely. And I'm not here that telling you you have to. But if you want more improvement, maybe limit them a bit. Because as Americans, we eat animal products at least five times, four or five times a day, right? Milk is an animal product, right? Yogurt, cheese, meat, eggs. And if you think about it, that's a lot of animal product. That's a lot of cholesterol. That's a lot of fat that our body has to figure out what to do with. And unfortunately, it causes problems. So currently, we're in a state of crisis as America for being overweight and obese. And we know that health care issues come along with each of these diagnoses. And you say, well, my doctor doesn't talk to me about it. Well, Truth is, they have 10 to 15 minutes. When I was working in an office, I was allotted 10 to 15 minutes. That included charting, ordering the meds. There wasn't a whole lot of time for education and to help people understand that you can get control over your health conditions or at least improve them by changing your lifestyle. So heart disease, again, 735 heart attacks. Um, one person dies every 37 seconds from cardiovascular disease in the United States. We're in, we're in a healthcare crisis, and we don't have the money to fix it, do we? The amount of money that we're spending on healthcare is um, pretty sad. 
So one in three will be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And when I first started in medicine, very rare did I hear about type 2 diabetes. Very rare. Now we have children that are being diagnosed, and teenagers being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It's totally a disease of lifestyle. It's not a disease process. It's not a disease that we acquire because of um, cancer and genetics. It's purely from there. So one out of 10 Americans have diabetes, and that number is changing. It's growing rapidly. So seven, cancer, you know, I could just keep going on and on. We know that there's an issue with heart disease, but cancer is catching up, isn't it? More and more diagnoses. And yeah, our treatments are getting better. They really are, but they're costly. They're damaging to families, they're to patient. If you've had anybody struggle with cancer, you know how hard that is on them. Between the chemo and the medications. And then our budget. Um, dementia. More and more we're hearing about dementia. We're hearing about Alzheimer's. And um, we know that by 2030, 66 million cases of dementia are coming. The cost of dementia is 13.26 billion annually in our country. Right? As a nation, this is how much we're paying for dementia. And it's coming sooner and sooner. People are experiencing this disease sooner and sooner, right? And I don't know if you guys have struggled with having a family member, but it's heartbreaking. And it's hard to take care of those people without having the support from the medical system and then having the finances. Okay, so, doo -doo -doo -doo. what is a, <laughs> I know, I feel like super woman. What is the whole food plant-based lifestyle? It's basically a lifestyle that includes diet, and I, I use diet loosely because I don't mean that you have to um, use a diet like um, cabbage soup diet, whatnot. It's the way you're eating is what this diet's about. And it's whole food, plant foods that minimize alterations, minimizes um, process, it also talks about reducing animal products in your diet. And you can do that. You don't have to completely cut it out. And I'm really cautious about saying this, especially in a community that hunts and fishes. Fish, um, fish. um, but you could cut it down. Like it used to be a serving of meat was the size of your palm. It's not the size of our head. Right? And the yogurt and the milk, and think about what you're eating and the impact it's having on your body. All of these things, oil and um, animal fats and cholesterol, really induces a lot of inflammation. Inflammation is starting to look like the root of so many complications, including cardiovascular disease, strokes, joint pain, diabetes, all of these things are interconnected. And if we can start limiting what we're doing, we're going to have better results. So daily exercise, we start out with 30 minutes a day. If you can't do 30 minutes a day, do 15 in the morning, 15 in the afternoon. And I, I coach a lot of people on how to eat this way and help to regain their health. And I tell them, 30 minutes right now, if you first met me, 30 minutes a day. I'm going to work you up to at least an hour a day. And I want it to happen throughout the day. You don't have to do one hour here and say, I don't have that time. Fine, do 15, 15, 15, 15. So we can get it incorporated into your life. Sleep, relaxation, and then socialization. All of these things are what help to heal us. So a diet in Whole Foods really does have the power to heal your body. Um, what are the ingredients in Whole Foods? Fiber. Do you know that Americans don't eat fiber? Our fiber is stripped out of everything. One of the biggest complaints I get from women in my office, constipation. I mean, I know nobody wants to talk about constipation, but constipation is huge in our culture, and that's because we have no fiber in our food. It's been stripped out, and fiber is what keeps your digestive system moving and active. Um, water. 
plants have water, they have antioxidants and phytonutrients. These are the things that are going to combat inflammation. These are the things that are going to give your body the tools it needs to heal itself. We are so lucky to have our bodies. They were meant to heal themselves. They weren't meant for chronic disease. But we're constantly insulting our bodies by eating food that doesn't help it three to four to five times a day, right? Everybody's got to have snacks. That's not allowing our body to heal. Okay, so why does this work? I don't know if you guys know uh, Dr. Williams. He was our previous um, president of the American College of Cardiology. And this is a direct quote from him. There's two kinds of cardiologists, vegans and those who haven't read the data. I love that. And then this is one of my heroes, Dr. Esselton. His wife and daughter are on YouTube all the time. They do cooking classes. They're adorable. His wife is about eight five, I think, and then his daughter. But um, I love this because some people think eating this way is extremely extreme, right? But he says to have your heart, your chest broken open and get a vein from your leg and put it into your heart, that's extreme. And yet in our society, people think having open heart surgery is normal. They think I'm a wacko for the way I eat. It, it's just a different perspective and we have to start realizing we do have some control. He also <laughs> was part of a movie called Fork Over Knives. And I've got a couple of movies that are just fun to watch, to learn from, and to understand. Okay, so, Dr. Elsatin did a study with a group of people who were told they were too sick cardiovascularly to have surgery. Couldn't do anything for them. So he took this group of people and he put them on the whole food plant-based lifestyle. Exercise, eating plants, and whole foods. Um, and if you look at it, this is what their heart, what did the patient's heart look like? This is a blood vessel to the heart. So this was pre-eating and having this lifestyle. This is post. And if you look at this artery, how open and clear it is. So we know we can reverse the disease by taking care of ourselves. We know our body can actually heal itself. The other thing I want you to notice is See all this obstruction? But then look at all the extra blood vessels that are all gone. Same patient, and this isn't like, I don't know, he didn't cheat, <laughs> right? So this is, look at all the other blood vessels that are going back to that heart, right? And we know that obstruction to uh, the blood vessels to the heart causes angina, right? Heart pain, because it's not getting the oxygen it needs to work and to pump. But if you look at this, I think that, if that doesn't change how you think, that, you know, really, truly would. They feel. So after 20 years of eating this way, and these patients were all critical, the only ones that had reverse disease, and one actually passed away when they <coughs> quit, said they didn't want to do it. <coughs> so, studies have proven we can prevent, arrest, reverse chronic disease. We can decrease our cancer risk. Even if you have a genetic link towards it, we can decrease your risk for it by how you eat. We can tell that gene either go, go ahead, here's all the food to support cancer, or no, no, we're going to keep you in check. Um, autoimmune reverses, well, this is a big one. I want to say, when you talk about erectile dysfunction, which we don't talk about in public, but <laughs> those same blood vessels are very small, right? They're clogged. That's why they're not working. But think about it. If they're clogged to that organ, they're probably clogged to this organ. They're probably clogged to your liver. They're probably clogged to your kidneys, <clears throat> right? So we can help to reduce it, but some um, doctors say when a gentleman comes in and he complains about erectile dysfunction, that's actually a precursor to heart disease. Mm -hmm. That maybe they need to wake them up for cardiovascular disease because that's mm -hmm. showing before anything else. 
Um, it lowers cholesterol blood pressure, um, enables healthy weight loss. Because if you think about it, the way I'm promoting food is very low calorie, high density. So you get really full. Like if you have a really big salad and you have a piece of fruit and you have a baked potato, that's a large volume of food. But it's probably 400 calories. Especially if you don't put the butter, the sour cream, <laughs> the oily dressing, right? <laughs> it depends. Fills you up, you feel happy, you get nutrition for your body, but you don't have to store those extra calories that are hanging about. Okay, so increasing energy, sleep, age defying. There's study after study that are showing us that it reduces depression. And think about all these kids what they eat for breakfast. Sugary cereal, maybe juice, maybe milk. We send them to school and then we tell them, I know you have all this extra sugar and energy, but don't move. You sit here and you listen to it. You know, we're undermining our children, too. And we're starting them on a habit of food uh, that's really not going to help them. So, how do you build your plate? <clears throat> All right? Now, if you tell me I am not giving up meat or dairy or cheese, okay, that's fair. But what I'd like you to do is look at a plate and have grains. And what I mean by the brown rice, I know people don't like brown rice. I want brown rice, um, barley, what, quinoa, um, all those wonderful grains that aren't manipulated. White rice, they've kind of stripped everything off and you're just stuck with carbs. The others have minerals and all kinds of vitamins and they also have all that fiber that your body is going to need. Um, vegetables without salt. Right? You can put a little vinegar, you can put a little pepper, you can put a little seasoning. But let's not drown out our broccoli with cheese sauce. Because that's kind of undermining it, right? And then legumes. Beans are the best thing you can imagine for your body. Right? Beans are wonderful. Cook them. Canned beans are great. They're full of insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is what gives us that bulk in our gut and pushes everything out. And if you actually use the juice in the can, right, that's called soluble fiber, and that helps to reduce your cholesterol. So if you make soup or you make stew, don't drain the beans. Just dump the whole can of beans in there, and you're going to get both kinds of fiber to help your nutrition. And then, of course, fruit. And you know, a lot of people who are diabetic soup can't have fruit and can't have potatoes. You can. That's not the obstacle. It's a lot of the fat, a lot of the oil is actually causing more of a problem with diabetes, and they're showing that. Um, and then if you're going to have animal products, just put a little bit in the middle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so exercise, we talked about that. 23% of America gets the right amount of exercise. That's not very many when you think about it. So it's recommended 150 at moderate and then 75 at vigorous, but I have to, a week. But I have to tell you, the studies say that's minimum. That is the minimum amount. And why do they give you this number? Because they don't think you'll do more. Why do doctors not always, even though they don't have the time? That's one factor. But a lot of times you'll ask a doctor, why didn't you talk about their weight? Why didn't you talk about nutrition? Number one answer? They won't listen to me anyway. Well, we will. People are begging to get a doctor that actually spit, or a nurse practitioner, or a provider that will actually spend the time with them to say, this is what you need to do. Um, and then the Mayo Clinic is saying 30 minutes daily. I say an hour. Sleep, another thing that we're lacking in our, our country, seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, how do we make that happen? Because we really do need good habits. Basically, the bedroom, the only place it's for is sleep and relations, right? That's the best. You don't want to sit there and turn it into your reading room. You don't want it to be your TV room. You want it to be made for that. Keep it dark. Keep it cool because we know that we sleep better when it's cool. Um, try to reduce the caffeinated beverages after 11. You're going to exercise, you're going to avoid alcohol prior to the or bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then eliminate D 
dinner and snacks. Even if you guys, if you stop eating that ice cream before bedtime, right? Because that's a habit we have. I used to have, where you'd have a nice big bowl of ice cream and you get a big full belly and then you go to sleep. But your body isn't sleeping because your body has to figure out how to process all that sugar and that fat, right? So eliminating that, and when we talk about intermittent fasting, you guys have all heard that buzzword now. Really, truly, if you stop eating after six and you don't eat breakfast until eight, you've kind of given your body a break for processing food for 14 hours. And that's part of what we're talking about. If you think about how the average American eats, we eat dinner at six, right? And then we have our snack at 8 or 9. <laughs> and then we watch TV till 12 and decide we need a little bit more because we want to sleep. So then we eat a bunch of carbs, right? And then we wake up at 6, 7, 8, and we start all over again. So you're not giving your body enough time to take a break. Okay, so where to start? This is kind of your plan. And I, I'll, I'll take questions too. But make a plan. Is this something that's going to help you and help your family? Because we're responsible for our children. We're responsible for people who watch us. Right? And they want us. They're watching you constantly. If you're a grandparent, your kids are watching. Your grandkids are watching what you eat. And they're modeling after us because we're their role models. So make a plan. Make a plan for you and think about it. Start at a pace, at a pace that's manageable. Okay, so I'm not expecting you guys to all go home and decide you're going to be a vegan. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and I, I, I don't call myself a vegan. I don't eat animal products, but I'm not a vegan. Because I don't eat crud food. Oreos are crud food. Doritos are crud food. But they're vegan. Mm. So I'm not a vegan. I'm a whole food plant food vegan. <laughs> um, and then pick one goal just today. You know, start a list. Pick one goal today. Is it going to be that you're going to do 30 minutes of walking? Is it that you're going to reduce your animal products from five times today to two times today? Or it could be every morning, let's have a bowl of oatmeal, just plain oatmeal with a cup of berries and maybe a little walnut on top. I mean, you can't tell me that when you have oatmeal with a cup of berries, and a quarter cup of walnuts, that's not delicious, because it really is, right? I mean, even if you don't like <coughs> milk, you like berries. I need milk and sugar. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not just eating some milk meal with some berries. <laughs> you get used to it. And, and I love that comment because our taste buds have become adapted to junk food, fat food, sugar food, salty food. But there's hope. It takes 10 days for your taste buds to shift. Mm -hmm. So if you don't keep eating all that stuff, your taste buds actually will start to taste sweet foods from berries, from fruit, from bananas. So then the sugar is almost an insult. The fat <coughs> is too much. Um, so 10 days, if you can clean it up for 10 days, you'll notice taste is better. Um, and then make each meal heavy on brown rice, leaves, fruit and vegetables. Um, B12 is one vitamin that if you're over 50, you should probably be taking anyway. But B12 is critical when you eat this way, only because so much of our B12 is coming from animal products. And the animals are not, they're getting it from their feed, we're getting it from what they eat. But B12 is critical when you're eating this way. Any questions? Any converts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I yes. I have a question. With, yeah. with fruits and vegetables, actually with meats too, but like to what extent should we be worried about um, pesticides? Great and question. Pesticides and all that. I didn't pay you to ask that, did I? Uh, no. Okay, there's something on the internet called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So, the dirty dozen are the foods that you definitely would like to get organic, okay? Because a lot of those um, are heavy pesticides, like berries are heavy pesticides. 
Um, that's why I buy frozen organic when they're out of season and I don't know where they're coming from. Um, the Clean 15 is a list that is the foods that are the least amount of pesticides and the safest to eat. So use your money wisely. Buy the organic for the dirty dozen. Save your money on the Clean 15. And it's an app that you can just download. They update it every year. So somebody is spending the money to study all the products and they update it. So I keep it on my phone when I go grocery shopping. I make decisions like asparagus. Who knew that it's part of the Clean 15, mm -hmm. right? And asparagus is so expensive, but I was buying it organic and then I went, mm-mm. Um, beans typically are going to be lower. They're not on, on either list, really. So it's mainly your, your produce that you want to watch. Um, brown rice, if you've heard about organic um, arsenic. Um, one thing to do with brown rice is to boil it in a pot of water like pasta and then drain it because the arsenic goes into the water, you get rid of the water, and you're left with just the brown rice. So it's a really nice little trick um, to cook your brown rice that way. And I hate saying that because people always have rice cookers, but it's like if, if it leaches into the water, do you really want to eat it? And that's organic brown rice too? All brown rice, oh, wow. and it's, it's a natural occurrence. Okay. Uh, California brown rice has least arsenic. Um, believe it or not, Japan is a little bit higher, mm -hmm. and it just has to do with their soil, because it's in the soil, and it's not been put in there by man. I need energy. You do. Okay. But the four groups of food. Anything that will give me the energy. Yeah. That's why I drink coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you're gonna you're gonna get more energy eating this way. But personally, um, because I exercise quite a bit um, and I exercise pretty hard lately, um, I eat a lot of foods that are a little bit higher protein. So tofu, tempeh, all of those foods have a little bit higher protein available for you, and that'll give you more energy. Do you like tofu? Oh yeah. Yeah, I love Chinese. It. I have to like. Oh, you have to like. <laughs> so she brings up one last thing that I want to really talk about is tofu and soy. Ten years ago, we used to say that soy increased your risk for breast cancer. That is so untrue, and I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed about some of the advice I gave to women 10, 15 years ago because we were told as care providers that. Soy caused cancer. It doesn't. It actually reduces the incidence of breast cancer in women. Um, so soy, you shouldn't be afraid of at all. Tempeh is just a byproduct of either soybeans or grains. It's me. Um, yep. How close is this to a raw foods diet? Uh, I cook food. You do cook. Okay. It's probably you know raw foods are going to be healthy vegetables, things like that. But I definitely cook my beans. I, I cook food. I love soup. I'm, I'm a big soup human. Just dump it all in a bucket, you know. <laughs> and the main reason to cook food, uh, raw vegetables, is to get them elected? Um, yes. Certain foods like beans, you're yeah. right. Certain foods like beans, you, you must follow fervent. Well, I had raw vegetables and I paid the price. And then yeah. I thought it was because of the liquid, so I had to cook it. You have to be careful about which foods are the higher lectin, but beans are good because you can't eat raw beans anyway. So um, lectins are naturally occurring in certain foods, and some people are uh, more sensitive than others. For me, I you know I don't have an issue whatsoever with that, but then I'm not going to eat raw beans, raw potatoes anyway. So. But you're right. There's a Dr. Furman that is, uh, I think it's Furman, or Gundy. Gundy is the guy that talks about no lectins a lot. Um, but the interesting thing, and I know I gotta go, the interesting thing about him is he talks about lectins and what he says is if you're gonna, you don't exclude them for life, you exclude them until your body heals and then you slowly introduce them. But it's Gundy, G-U-N-D-Y, I think. What is the name of the app? that you were talking about. Oh, Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. Oh, I just did it. I can't find it. Okay. Uh, go under, if you can't find it there, go under um, 
just look up Clean 15 really does it. The book I gave you, now Dr. Greger with nutritionfacts.org, he's the guru. He does all, he doesn't do the research, he analyzes the research. So everything I have up here, that is not information I pulled out of my ear, that is not my opinion. This is all evidence-based research. And nutritionfacts.org, like let's say you have eczema. Mm -hmm. Go on nutritionfacts.org, look up eczema, and they'll talk about nutrition, the studies that are out there, and how to deal with it. But I'm also always available. I, I love coaching. I love helping people to regain their health this way. Um, because truly, I think it's a miracle. I mean, I'm 62, and my husband's 71, and neither one of us are on any medications. And it's not because we don't need them. You know, it's not like, it's because we don't need them. It's not because we're running away from them. You know, cholesterol, blood pressure, all of that is nice and normal, and it's because we've been all the struggle. And I'm a huge proponent. So if anybody wants help or anything, so where are you? Right here in Gold Beach? I'm in Brookings. Oh, Cape for Ella. I'm not Cape in Brookings. I'm Cape for Ella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, thank you guys for your attention. Oh, Did you bring it? Yeah, give me my, I'll give you my email if you guys want help. Now, I barter. I'm retired. So if you really do want help, I barter. Like if you have a big garden, I'll strip your garden out. <laughs> So I'm not in this to make money. My um, email is basically my name, S-H-R-R-Y, no E, Baum, B-A-U-M, at gmail.com. All one word. Yeah. 